One of the things I do like about site modeling is that it's now easier to place a texture onto your site model. I think I've already done this previously, but I'll just show you what I did was to create a texture. I took a texture from an aerial photograph. I used Google to measure the size of the aerial texture. I then applied that site texture to this object. So let's just drag that on. Use my attribute mapping tool. And there's my house on the site. If we look at this in 3D, you'll see that this house is actually mapped onto the site. We can use our site modifiers and trace over the building. And one of the things I like about the change in site modifiers is if you close the site modifier too early or you stop it too early, there's now a close button on here. I know it sounds something small, but the number of times I've gotten lost at finding my way back. Okay, I'm just going to use my offset tool. Uh, first of all, let's set that height. I want to know what height it is. So it's 201 feet, 9 inches. I'll just take a few inches off there. Let's make it 209 feet. No, oh, you got that wrong. So 201 feet. And I'm going to offset that to create my uh, boundary. And let's update our site model. So what we've got here is a little bit of cut at the back and a bit of fill at the front because my site drops off down the bottom. The blue line is my boundary, which I really like because boundaries are now visible. I like the boundaries being visible in 3D. And your aerial photograph is still mapped onto that site model even with the modifiers. I found that site modifying is a lot easier using this, um, particularly that ability to close with the object info palette. Just saved me so much time writing my manual. We've got lots of questions, uh, so we can start to work some through some of these questions if I can. Frank, would you like me to answer the questions, or would you like to um, would you like to take over? Uh, yeah, yeah, go. F oh no, 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 go, go, go for it. I wouldn't be able to answer most of them anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to see if I can read all their questions. Um, the push-pull, can you push-pull at an angle so that one edge of the surface is being pulled lower than the other? Um, I don't think that's really the way the push-pull tool is designed. It's designed to extrude the faces out, so they do tend to come out parallel, but you may have noticed that that there were two options that I used. One was the move face and the other was um, the extract face. Now if you use the move face it goes square. If you use the other method it actually pulls it in the angle that that face is. So maybe that's your answer. Right, done end wall caps. Um, is it possible to work edit objects in 3D while in a solid or other rendering mode? Now, to be honest, David, I haven't tried that, so I, I have no idea. I'd have to quickly try and do it. But certainly with OpenGL, I think, um, you'll find that's po probably possible in OpenGL. The rendering is sped up a lot. Now, there's a real challenge with the rendering, I think, that as you speed up the ability to render objects, you also start to require more quality and so you're back where you started with it taking just as long. But if you can afford a, a